Hey guys, it's Mike. I'm getting a lot of questions lately regarding um, what the cache drive does for you, how much speed you actually gain by installing a cache drive in your Unraid 6 server. Now before I get into that, I just want to make one comment based on the introduction of my last video. I had some um, personal issues I was dealing with. I'm happy to say they've cleared up, everything's fine. Um, and it did give me a bit of a life lesson, and I should learn this by the time I'm this old. Um, Try not to stress about stuff, especially when you don't have a lot of control over it. I got myself sick for a few days over something that really did, I didn't need to be getting sick over. And i got to learn to relax next time, that's all. So anyway, just have faith that things do work out the way they're supposed to work out. And anyway, I'm happy as, a, I don't know, a bird with wings or something. Terrible at these uh, metaphors. But <clears throat> back to Unraid. So what I want to do is show you the difference in copy speed between using a cache drive and not using a cache drive. So what I'm doing is I'm going to set up two different shares on my Unraid 6 server. One that says go ahead and use the cache drive and the second one that says do not use the cache drive right directly to the parity protected array. Now here's the main difference. The one that writes to the cache drive, I can tell you before we even test it, it's going to write a lot faster. So if you're on a laptop and you're copying files to the server, you can go ahead and get those files on the server, disconnect and go do whatever. And then later at night, Unraid has a mover process that will take those files off the cache drive and they'll put them into your parity protected array. And at the end of this video, I'll talk to you about the times you might not want to do that. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write to a second share I'm going to create that does not use the cache drive. So in other words, when I'm writing to it, it's going to go, it's going to bypass cache drive entirely. It's going to go directly to that parity protected array. And that means that I get all the redundancy uh, of the fail safes um, of those drives when it copies. But it also means as I'm doing the copy, the server has to go through the processes of distributing the files and making the parity uh, information available on the parity drive. And if you remember from earlier videos, what the parity drive does is it provides a level of protection for a series of drives in your array. So in other words, if one of those drives goes bad, I could disconnect it, plug a new drive in, and the Unraid server will rebuild the content on that drive. So it provides a certain level of protection for you. If the data is on your cache drive and the cache drive goes bad before it gets copied to your drive array, the data is gone. All right. So um, you get the advantage of getting it on the server faster and you lose a little bit of protection. Now there's things you can do. You can mirror the cache drive if you want. You can invoke the mover manually. We'll talk about all that. But let's go ahead and let's look at the performance advantage now. I'm going to switch over to screen captures. I'm going to come back after and give you a summary. Okay? Okay, guys. What I want to show you, I've been getting a lot of questions about um, how much the cache drive can speed up the performance of your Unraid server. So I'm going to do a demonstration for you on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create two completely brand new shares in the system. And the first share, I'm going to go ahead and call this test with cache. And this is basically just going to be a share with a cache drive. I'm going to keep pretty much everything at the defaults uh, just to keep everything consistent. So use cache disk. I'm going to say yes. And when I say yes here, what that indicates is that when I write files out to the hard disk, it's going to write them to the cache drive first, and then in the evening, your mover process will go ahead and move those files into your drive array. Now, in my case, on my server, I've got a single cache drive, so during the period of time that I, between the time I write it to the server and the time it moves to uh, the array, it's technically unprotected. Um, in media files, I don't really care too much about that. Uh, if I do care about it, I keep it local till the move of a process finishes. But you, you, you do have the option with Unraid to add additional drives into your cache so they're actually mirrored, so you have a certain level of protection there also. Um, you're going to immediately see the advantages of why we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Share. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to leave this one as public. Okay, so done. I'm going to keep it as simple as I possibly can. So I'm going to add another share and I'm going to call this one 
test without cache. Okay? And everything's going to be the same except you notice here I'm going to say no to using the cache disk. And all that means is when I write files to the server, it's going to skip the cache disk and write directly into the protected drive array. And when I say protected drive array, that's the series of disks that's within my rate unraid server that is protected by a parity drive. So if any one of those drives dies, I can basically hot swap out that drive and it'll rebuild the information on it. So I'm going to go ahead and add this share. Okay, I'm going to go click done. And I've got two shares now that's created. Minimize this. And I'm going to go ahead and map myself into these two drives. Test with cache. And I'm going to go ahead and create another folder here. I'm going to open up another window. And I'm going to call this one test without cache. Okay, so what we have here now is this big movie file. I'm going to give you an idea how big it is. So I'll go to properties, and you can see it's three and a half gigabytes. So it's a pretty substantial size file. So the first place I'm going to copy it to is over here, my test with cache directory. So this one's going to use the cache drive for the copy. So I can bring it over here, and you'll see here it's going to hit 112 MBS. It's going to be pretty consistent throughout the entire process. And again, it's writing into that single cache drive right now in my Unraid 6 server. And if you notice, that's a pretty flat copy curve. So it's very consistent. And by the way, that speed is about the maximum of what this uh, gigabit Ethernet cable that I'm running uh, supports. Um, the Unraid server is running a single gigabit Ethernet cable right now. Uh, you can certainly put more in there, but the computer that I'm connected to also has a single uh, gigabit Ethernet. So the bottleneck is definitely the network at that point. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to go over to my other test without cache directory, and this is the same, same type share, except this one here I purposely told it do not use the cache drive. So it's going to write directly into that protected drive array which is a series of drives protected by that parity drive. So let's go ahead and do that copy. And you can see it starts off at 112 MBS and it gets all the way up to, right now it's up to almost 30% with the same exact speed as the cache drive. But watch, hit about 35% in and look at the speeds, they kind of fall off a cliff. So it's down to 53, 50, it's gonna go lower than that. Um, but what's happening now is there's only so much you can write into the drive array before the parity drive actually has to start doing its job in writing those bits to protect the information. And that's what's happening now. So it's kind of leveled off at around 50 MBS. Uh, I went a little lower. Okay, so, so right now what's happening though is even though it's going a lot slower, I'm getting immediate protection on the server uh, in that drive array. So that's kind of what you gotta ask yourself, right? Is it important enough that you're willing to deal with slower copy speeds or can you wait until later? Now, and it's done. And you can see it took quite a bit longer to copy without the uh, without the cache drive. And I purposely set up this test. So there was nothing else running on the server at the time, so we get a little bit better performance. But it's actually, from the server's perspective, it's never really any faster, right? Because you get the information on the cache drive, and even though my job of copying the file is done, and I can move on to something else, uh, the server's still got to run that mover process in the background. So I'm going to switch back to video, and we're going to conclude this video. Okay, I'm back. So that was a fun experiment. As you can see, uh, clearly through the demonstration, uh, writing the large movie file to the uh, cache, to the array with the cache drive is clearly a lot faster over time than the one going to the parity protected array, which started off fast, but then its performance dropped down as it was writing that parity information. And that's pretty much what I was seeing before I put the cache drive in. And considering I was using this to back up a lot of large files, including video files I used to make this channel, uh, it was kind of irritating, right? So I, I just want to get it on the server and then I can go do something else and let the server go do its thing later. 
So, this is such a great thing and it's so fast, why wouldn't you want to use it? Well, there's a few scenarios, right? So, in my case, let's say I'm just copying up, um, let's say, movie files. I don't know, Star Wars, I ripped off of Blu-ray or something. Um, I just want to get it up there and if it, if it died, and I, so here's the thing. The file gets on your cache drive. The cache drive goes bad before it gets copied to the array. File's gone, okay? Uh, I'm not too worried about it. If I ripped it off a of Blu-ray, I can rip it again, right? Um, but let's say I'm uploading family pictures and I copy all my family pictures to a share and it's on that cache drive and then I erase it locally, I go away and that cache drive goes bad, I'm not recovering that data, it's gone. All right, so like family pictures, business documents, things I use to run this channel, um, things I can't easily reproduce or can't reproduce at all. I might want to think twice about running them through a cache drive. I might want to invest a little extra time in saving it to the server uh, using the parity protected array. So at least I got a certain level of protection that if a drive goes bad, I can swap it out and recover that data. Um, now, that said, please do not take what I'm saying as, oh, if it's on a drive protected array, I'm covered. I don't need to back up. That's incorrect, right? So um, having having RAID arrays, uh, parity protected drives, whether it's Windows storage spaces, uh, and I, any one of the out of the box NASs, QNAP, Synology, Drobo, all those guys, they all use some form of RAID 5 or RAID 10. Uh, that provides you some level of fault tolerance for the hardware, for the drives. But let's say this building I'm in burns down, okay? And I lose the entire server because if the place is on fire, I'm running out the door. I'm not going to get my server. Uh, to quote another internet uh, legend, ain't nobody got time for that, okay? So I'm not going back in to get the server. Now, if I lose all my movie files from a media server because the house burned down, that's going to be the last thing I'm worried about, okay? <laughs> could be like, where am I going to live? Um, but if I uh, were to lose my tax papers, business papers, uh, family photos, things I can't recover, even if the house burned down, I would feel pretty bad about that. So in addition to keeping them on a parity protected array, I also have multiple backup strategies. One is I've still got that QNAP server we talked about many times earlier. I should probably do a few videos on that again. Um, I have a job that copies everything from my Unraid server over to that server, at least all my critical data. So I've got a second copy there. I've got several external drives that I also back uh, data up to, so that's a third copy. And I've got a computer that's not in this building, it's off-site, that the most critical files copy over the network uh, to that. Um, and I got a couple portable drives I typically just take to the, the office and leave them there as well. So that's another form of off-site backup. I've got some friends that also pay for a cloud subscription service. So if you don't have the options I have, that's certainly another way to do things. Uh, just keep in mind the backups of those cloud services take a long time and restoring can take a long time. Um, but if that's your only option, it's better than nothing and just watch your data limits. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. And if you guys like what I'm doing here, please like the video, and I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to the channel, and I'd be beyond thrilled if you'd go tell your friends that are into technology about this channel and get them to subscribe also. Uh, I'm just trying to provide a value for you guys. I enjoy doing it, and it's, I don't know, it's, it, it, I enjoy teaching, right? So when more people watch it, I feel like I'm accomplishing something. So that said, again, happy as heck today. I'm thrilled. Um, just on top of the world, which is a, such a big difference from a couple days ago when I made that video. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have another video for you. Hopefully tomorrow. I got it's in post production now, and that one's going to be really neat. You're going to like that. So I'll put that out soon. And it's it's network related. Okay. Take care, guys. This is Mike. <laughs>